Governor Chris Christie has an idea on how to reduce student debt. Sell yourself to the highest bidder. That's an interesting plan. Now, uh, this comes from, of course, uh, a recent speech um, at the Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa, and he was talking about student debt, school choice, and teacher accountability in the speech. Now, he started this out, of course, as most politicians would, talking about their modest upbringing and the opportunities and blah, 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 right? Uh, he talked about how his father was a student who was accepted to Columbia, enlisted in the Army because he couldn't afford his tuition. And his lesson after talking about his father and how he got help through the GI Bill was that uh, debt-free college was not the answer. What an interesting conclusion to come to mm -hmm. when you're talking about somebody who got help so that he didn't have college debt. Yeah. Well, here's my take on Chris Christie right now. I think that Chris Christie wants to be that guy that appeals to the moderates, that appeals to younger folks, that appeals to, uh, you know, those that may be undecided. They want to see him as kind of like, hey, he's a Jersey guy. You know, when you just hear him talk, he's not the most unlikable guy in the world. He, he's kind of charismatic. You know, fat shaming is a big deal now. So there was a lot of response, uh, even from those on the left that were sticking up for him when that picture of him in that like baseball uniform circulated or whatever. Uh, I think he's really trying to play on that. So he's addressing the issue of, of student loan debt so that, you know, to, to the general person or the person that's not really reading into it too much, oh, well, Chris Christie's addressing student loan debt. He cares about that issue too. Well, if you look at his solution, it's not a very good solution. He's not uh, recognizing education as a public good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's kind of just wanting to, uh, you know, pat the back of the corporate elite yet again and, and continue the crisis we already have. Uh, but he's saying some stuff about it. Uh, so I, I think that's what he's going for here. I mean, this was just kind of a ploy. And uh, I think we're going to see more of that from him as time goes on. He's going to talk about these issues. He's probably going to say something about health care. And it's like, oh, Chris Christie wants universal health care. But then you're going to look at, you're going to read between the lines. And it's like, well, my solution is we just, you know, give the for-profit insurance industry free reign again you know, and whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so you mentioned solutions, right? Let's talk about some of Christie's uh, solutions to the student, student debt thing. But first, we're going to go to a quote. Now, he says, this is a system, uh, this is the story of how our system is supposed to work. And speaking, of course, about his debt. A system where we all need to take personal responsibility to grasp the opportunities of higher education, but also one where we can get a leg up where we need it. Now, he says his solutions uh, Congress should properly fund and expand student aid programs. But he didn't, of course, give any specifics. Now, he did say, uh, he did talk about Governor Terry Branstad's student, done redu uh, student debt reduction organization tax credit. Yes, so he wants to help with a tax credit. Uh, not exactly the best idea. Uh, research suggests that providing tax credits won't tackle the problem of college affordability for people who need it most i.e. low-income students. Now, according to a new paper from the National Bureau of Economic Research, a college attendance didn't go up in households that were eligible for tax credits, which are not accessible as uh, grants. Now, the thing that I mentioned earlier at the lead of this story was how Chris Christie thinks that you could sell yourself to uh, an investor in order to have that investor pay for your college, and that's called an income share agreement which allows students to essentially issue stock in themselves and allows people to invest in college students or to, quote, own human capital contracts, <laughs> which means that an investor could pay a portion of the tuition to attend college in exchange for that student giving the investor a certain percentage of their income for so many years. Hmm, I, I don't know. This, this kind of reminds me of something. Indentured servitude, perhaps? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, in a way, it, it would be subtly continuing the crisis we already have, and it's, you know, a benefit for uh, the elite. And that's why, yeah, like, the way you summarized that w was very telling, because I think it speaks to what we're getting at here. He'll say the, those nice words at the beginning, like, yeah, you know, we should help out a little bit, you know, we, we should, we should uh, you know, the government should help out a little bit. Uh, but then here's this idea, and when you look at his concrete idea, his concrete idea is this, uh, you know, the, this I, this privatization idea. I mean, basically the summary, more privatization. Not getting into the idea that education is a public good, uh, you know, the pay it forward model or anything like that. Those aren't being touched because that doesn't uh, support the conservative narrative. So this is just, this is Christie's uh, game at trying to look like a moderate, right. which he is not. Right. Yeah, it, it, you know, the, the whole idea is also funny because he wants to address student debt, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, people owe, uh, you know, since the federal government is in, uh, is into the college loan game, right? They've been making billions of dollars off of students, which, uh, of course, Elizabeth Warren has been pointing out. You know, we should not be making money off the backs of students. And so instead of getting into debt with the government, Chris Christie wants you to get in debt with a private investor. I, I, instead, it's it's so it's so strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it's almost like uh, just further privatizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's a bizarre idea. Something that would I I don't think in any way would be efficient or work at all whatsoever. Uh, but it, it's something that um, would be appealing to those with the most resources you know like that that would be an appealing way to make money uh you know again very much just sort of playing the game i think when it comes to the student loan thing it, as far as the united states go i i think the best step we could take is uh adapting the pay it forward model like australia has even though there's a lot of things i don't like about that model and even though i don't think it's perfect i think with the situation we have uh, it's the best thing we got as far as like a a uh, short term solution goes, okay. and, and then we can revisit it. So I'm not familiar with that model. Can you kind of give like a summary of that? Yeah, I'm basically, and and uh, the state of Oregon is experimenting with with trying to institute it. Uh, you would go to college for free, and then after college, three percent of your income would go towards. Um, would go towards a fund that also helped other students go to college for free. And that's why it's called like pay it forward. Like, hey, you got this, just pay it forward. And, you know, 3%, that's, well, that might be a lot of money. But when you think about student loans and you think about the debt that people have, you know, 3% of your income over the course of your lifetime would probably be significantly yet less. And then you get to go to college for free you know, you can kind of pursue what you want to pursue. You won't have to make decisions about, oh, well, I can't go to, you know, like that one uh, article recently, that person that got into all the Ivy League schools and then didn't go because of concerns about the debt they would go right, into. Right. Uh, you wouldn't have that anymore. Right. And, well, I don't think this solution is perfect. I think that with what we got, I mean, that would be the best way to, to try, you know, to start battling some of this stuff. Right, because you know, I could see, I could see potential issues with that, but nonetheless, you are correct in at least that it would be a better model than what we have now. Almost anything is better than the current model that we have at this point, because what it it, it, it forces people, you know, college kids into taking out massive amounts of money, getting buried in debt, and then putting off basically the entire rest of their lives in order to pay off this debt that cannot be discharged through bankruptcy. It cannot be cleared. You're stuck with it r the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and oftentimes, unfortunately, we've seen that a lot of people don't always end up or don't even end up in the fields that they went to school for. Right. And so, you know, they're pretty much, they're pretty much stuck. And now, you could be like Chris Christie and say, well, that's, you know, you should have had more personal responsibility. You should have chose something in the STEM field. Or right. Something, something in a better field. Not my mm -hmm. fault. You got a liberal arts degree. <laughs> that's not the point, though. Right. Nobody well, should be buried in debt. Like yeah. That. 
And as far as the pay it forward thing, it's not like we could just unroll it tomorrow because, I mean, it's not like we could have a situation where somebody is paying off all these debts and then they have to pay this other thing too. It's like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm paying this 3% so that people don't have the problems that I had. Meanwhile, I'm still being crippled by my debt. Uh, man, that I don't think that's okay. So, you know, it's not like it could be unrolled tomorrow, but, you know, if we could maybe try to orchestrate something where maybe one scratches the other's back, where maybe, you know, participating in the pay forward model, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing at this point. Right, but right. the well, point well, is, the big point is, we've reached a mode of crisis and further privatization uh, to that degree is not going to solve it. We have to do something different, you know. And, and look, that's even the issue of what we, like, what do we do for, for students today? And that's even the issue that I've had with uh, the Sanders plan, right? Is that he, he, he says, uh, wants to make it free and affordable for, for everyone going into. But what about all those people who have racked up all of that debt? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and part of his plan was, well, we can refinance it. We can reduce the debt burden um, somewhat, you know, and reduce repayments and everything. But for a lot of people, that may not be enough. And, and people need some real relief when it comes to student loan debt. And, and that's that's an issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Not well, just and, for students going forward, but for the students already saddled with that. Well, and a lot of these loans were very predatory. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of these loans, I mean, the, you know, these companies have already made so much money. Uh, off the bat, you know, like with the interest and then the principal's already there. So I think the idea of student loan forgiveness also needs to be revisited. Yes. And somebody who's more qualified than myself and more qualified than both of us, Jeff, sure. uh, you know, needs to go in there and really do some hardcore economic analyses. And some of these predatory loans where, where the money's been made back, they just need to go to these companies and be like, you know what? This should have been stopped in the first place. This never should have happened. You made plenty of money. You're done now leave this person alone. I, I mean, really, right. like, like that's when you reach a mode of crisis, sometimes that's what has to happen. Um, you know, and, and do I know the details of how that would unfold? No, not necessarily. I'm not an expert. But, uh, but I, I think something like that needs to be explored. Mm-hmm. And, and really, the whole idea for us talking about this is to get a conversation going mm-hmm. and, and to have more people pick up that conversation and, and, and ask our leaders, you know, our elected representatives, what are you going to do about this? What what plan do you have to help these people? Mm-hmm. And and to really kind of push them on it because it it has, as you said, it's hit a mode of crisis and uh, it it needs to be addressed. 